Peep? What the heck is Peep? Let's go find out. Hey, what's up everyone? Chris again, paramedic here to talk to you about PEEP. So if you're not aware what PEEP is, it's a really important thing for us to utilize out there in the field uh, when we're giving positive pressure ventilation. So first let's talk a little bit about what PEEP is and then why we're gonna give it and how we're gonna give it. So PEEP stands for positive end expiratory pressure, okay? So <clears throat> PEEP is something we actually have in our lungs all the time when we're breathing normally. Uh, and we're gonna have that at a rate of about three to five centimeters of water above the atmospheric pressure. Um, so, you know, the, the pressure of the earth, essentially. So uh, we're gonna call that physiological PEEP. And so physiological PEEP, or positive end expiratory pressure, is necessary to keep the alveoli open. And so if you remember, the alveoli are those little air sacs we have in our lungs, uh, and that's where gas exchange is going to happen. And so those air sacs are surrounded by capillaries, uh, and in those capillaries is where that O2 and CO2 exchange happens through the process called diffusion. So if you remember diffusion, uh, that's that passive process where we go from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Okay, so um, it's important for those alveoli to stay open. Uh, so there is air that can come up against those membranes. And so we can have that gas exchange happening there uh, in the alveoli. Okay, so um, flat alveoli, we don't have enough surface volume um, for there to be that good, uh, that good air uh, exchange or that good gas exchange between that O2 and CO2, okay? So thinking about the alveoli and PEEP, I like to think of the alveoli kind of like a balloon, okay? So uh, without having pressure in that balloon, that balloon's gonna go flat. And so the purpose of PEEP is to keep that balloon from going flat by uh, causing a back pressure in the airways uh, so that, that that end expiratory pressure doesn't go below that five centimeters of water, okay? Um, and like I said, we want that uh, those alveoli to stay open for a couple different reasons. Uh, number one, the hardest thing to do in our lungs is gonna be to pop open that flat alveoli, okay? It's a lot more difficult to pop open a flat alveoli than it is to take an alveoli that's already stinted open and to uh, stretch that out and add more air into that alveoli, into that little air sac, okay? So um, again, I like to think of this like a balloon, right? If you have a balloon, typically the most difficult breath to put into that balloon is gonna be the first one to get it started. And it's the same with our lungs. We wanna keep those alveoli stinted open to a degree uh, so that we don't have to re-pop them open every time we take a breath. And secondly, like I said before, a big thing that we need to do is keep those alveoli open to help increase the surface area of those alveoli. Uh, the higher surface area we have in the lungs, that means there's more available lung tissue for uh, air to touch against that membrane and to allow gas to exchange across, okay? So we need to make sure that we're keeping those alveoli nice and open for a couple different reasons there. So hopefully that makes sense to you and hopefully now you're seeing like, okay, I can see why PEEP would be an effective resource when I'm treating those respiratory patients, okay? We wanna keep uh, we want to keep those airways open and that's what PEEP is going to do. So how are we going to give PEEP? What are we going to do to actually utilize PEEP uh, for our patients? Okay, so uh, there's a couple different ways uh, your CPAP machines are going to cause some PEEP. We're not going to talk about CPAP here in this video uh, specifically, but a CPAP machine will give PEEP as well as a simple PEEP valve. Okay, and so this is more what we're talking about here. So a PEEP valve is going to attach to your BVM. Uh, and they commonly come packaged with a BVM when they're ordered, okay? So that might be dependent on what your different department that you work for does when they purchase these BVMs, but typically uh, it will be in the bag, or if not, you can buy them separately to attach to your BVM, okay? Um, and so uh, to add PEEP, you're gonna attach this valve to your BVM, and then you will select the level of PEEP uh, that you would like to apply to the patient. So five centimeters of water or five centimeters of H2O is gonna be a common starting point for the amount of PEEP to apply in EMS. Um, but and you'll hear me say this a couple times, make sure you're following your local protocols regarding how much PEEP to actually apply to your patients, okay? Uh, another thing to remember about PEEP when we're using BVM is in, it's important for us to make sure that we're maintaining a good mask seal when using that BVM. 
uh, if we're, we don't have a good mask seal, that back pressure is not going to be applied because that pressure is going to escape out of the side of the mask. So when we're talking about uh, a good mask seal and we're talking about doing PEEP, make sure you're really thinking about maybe that good two-handed technique, the good CE technique, whatever you're going to utilize to make sure you have that good mask seal when giving these ventilations. Uh, and after the ventilation is given, uh, make sure that you're keeping that good mask seal to allow that back pressure to work, okay? So now, uh, let's do a quick visualization with a peep valve uh, to show you how a peep valve works. We're gonna use a balloon uh, so that you can see how this all works. Body, okay. So I have a BVM here. I have a air balloon full of air, and I have a peep or positive end expiratory pressure valve attached to my BVM. Now this peep valve is set to 20 centimeters of water or 20 centimeters of H2O, which is the max amount of positive end expiratory pressure or peep that I can put uh, on this valve. Now, as you can see, this balloon, even though it's full of air, is not deflating, and that's because the air is trying to come out and come up through this peep valve, and this peep valve is causing that back pressure, okay? So I'm gonna back this down a little bit to 15, and we are going to see that we're losing a little bit of air. You probably can't see it very well because it is a slow process, uh, or, you, or you probably can't hear it very well, but we're starting to lose a little bit more air from the balloon, okay? So I'm gonna back it all the way down to 10. And now you're probably seeing that we're losing some air here, but we're still gonna have a little bit of air left over in the balloon, and that's what a peep valve is doing in your lungs, okay? That is allowing, as we exhale, it's making it so our lungs, our alveoli don't go totally flat, but stay popped open so that it's easier to inflate with our next breath. And so we can make sure that we still have air volume in those alveoli to allow CO2 and O2 to exchange in our lungs. So hopefully that little visualization gave you a good idea of what PEEP looks like and how it's going to work in our lungs to keep them open. Okay, so. Now we know PEEP, hopefully you know at least at this point, the PEEP's a really, really good tool for us to utilize even at the BLS level, but it's important to remember there are some contraindications or precautions when we're using PEEP, okay? So PEEP is going to lead to an increase in inner thoracic pressure, uh, which is gonna put pressure on the heart and great vessels uh, there within the chest, um, and that can cause decreased cardiac preload or decreased blood return to the heart, okay? So, it makes sense if we think about it. We have that back pressure, more pressure within the chest cavity, and remember that's a closed space. And so as that pressure goes up within that chest cavity, it pushes on the heart, it pushes on the, the aorta, it pushes on the vena cava, pushes on those great vessels, and we're gonna have a, a decreased amount of blood flow back into the heart, uh, which we call decreased cardiac preload. So that, that decreased preload can uh, lead to a decrease in blood pressure systemically, and so we need to be thinking about that when we're using PEEP on patients who maybe are hypotensive or at risk of hypotension, okay? So again, this is something that more specifically you need to look at your local protocols for guidance of when PEEP is contraindicated uh, based off of blood pressures, but that might be a contraindication or at least a precaution for you for applying PEEP. is going to be that hypotension or that possibility of hypotension. So somebody that maybe is hypovolemic, uh, especially is going to be um, maybe at risk if we're using a PEEP valve. So make sure you're thinking about that when we're talking about PEEP. Uh, another contraindication for PEEP is going to be suspected pneumothorax. Okay, so um, again, we don't want to increase um, the intrathoracic pressure uh, for a patient uh, who's already maybe hypotensive, um, and that could be the case here with a pneumothorax. If we have air trapped from uh, outside of the lungs, causing pressure on everything as happens in the pneumothorax, we don't want to further increase uh, that, um, that intrathoracic pressure by using a PEEP valve, okay? Uh, there are some other basic contraindications, another one commonly being um, a closed head injury. Uh, closed head injuries and increasing the thoracic pressure don't play well together that can cause an increase in that intracranial pressure. So that's another contraindication you might see. Um, really what this comes down to is make sure that you are referencing your local protocols uh, to see what kind of contraindications you may have for your system as far as applying PEEP to your patients, okay? So indications, contraindications, but what patient types are really going to benefit from PEEP? 
Um, in general, uh, in my practice, if I have a patient who uh, I am ventilating with mechanical ventilation, so using a BVM, giving some positive pressure ventilation, if they don't hit any of those contraindications, I'm going to use PEEP for those patients, okay? Um, at least five centimeters of PEEP is gonna help keep those airways open and help our ventilations to be more effective, okay? So really common if you're using a BVM, a lot of the time you're going to be using that PEEP valve unless you have any contraindications. Specific patients that would really benefit from this uh, are going to be emphysema patients because uh, very commonly emphysema patients are having destroyed alveoli and so um, allowing those alveoli to have that, uh, that and expiratory pressure to help them stay open is really beneficial for those patients, uh, which is exactly what patients do. If you've seen um, a COPD patient that kind of makes that whistling sound when they breathe out and has that pursed lip breathing, they're creating self-peep. That pursed lip breathing is causing that back pressure into their airways to help to keep those alveoli open. And so we're just doing this mechanically with a peep valve for those patients. But it's something that is so necessary for them, they're doing themselves. Uh, another common patient type that would really benefit from peep is going to be congestive heart failure patients, okay? We're not gonna go super into the reason for that because it's a little more complex, uh, but those congestive heart failure patients can really benefit from that decreased preload, from that back pressure and stenting open of the alveoli. So PEEP is gonna be really beneficial for those patients as well. Okay. So I hope that gave you some good information about PEEP and why and when we should apply PEEP. This is not comprehensive at all, but this is meant more as a, a basic, uh, you know, a basic um, entry to the world of PEEP, if you will, so you can start to see the benefits of PEEP. Make sure, like I said before, you are looking at your local protocols and your local equipment as far as if you're able to use PEEP and when you are allowed to use PEEP. You don't want to start to do something that's going to be outside your protocol. So make sure you're very aware of that before you start using PEEP. Okay. Like I said, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Hit subscribe, hit like, all of that stuff, and we will see you guys on the next video. You're just not Gucci enough.